Hello crafty friends, welcome to another usual white paper scraps video. So this morning I got my white paper scraps box out and I've sorted it into three piles. I've got skinny ones which I'm going to keep and not use for today because they're great for stamping sentiments on. And then I've got a little pile of medium sized scraps and a small pile of larger-ish scraps. So what I'm going to do today is what I did in my previous white paper scraps series and that is tape these together with a bit of washi tape on the back and use them as one sheet of paper. If you would like to watch the white paper scraps series that I did then I will leave a link in the video description. To tape these together I just use some washi from my use it or lose it washi tape box so that's what I'm going to be working on today it doesn't look pretty but by the end of the session it will do and today I'm just going to play with some stamps from this stamp set you don't need this stamp set to do what I do you can use whatever stamps you've got you can use found objects but I'm going to start off with this grungy dotty circle stamp and I'm going to use some archival ink in Vibrant Fuchsia. This is a permanent ink. So when I put some wet media on top of this, it won't shift. So I'm doing second generation stamping. Might even do third. So I can still get quite good impressions, even three or four times after I've inked. I'm trying to get a little bit of this pink pattern on every scrap, because eventually I will pull these apart. And this is the kind of thing that looks like a right old mess until you turn it into a card. Now I'm going to use this grungy grid stamp some Paradise Teal archival ink and I'm going to stamp it perpendicular to pink stamp and now I've got some Kitsch Flamingo Distress Oxide which I'm going to smush onto my mat Mix with some water to create a paint and then pick up with my smusher and smush it on top of everything that I've already done. So I think I've got good coverage there. I'm going to dry it with my hair dryer now. So we've done stamping and smushing and now I'm going to do some stenciling. So this is Salvage Patina Distress Oxide and I've got this wonky blob stencil here and I'm going to stencil that around and about the place so every scrap gets a little bit. To marry it all together, get all these different colour and textural elements to look as if they belong a bit more. I've got some white acrylic paint on my brayer and I'm going to roll it over. And this kind of, as I say, just marries everything together. It doesn't cover everything up, but it pushes everything into the background a bit makes it all look unified. Nothing stands out too much. You don't have to use a brayer for this or white acrylic. You can use a paintbrush or some kind of sponge dauber and find a colour or a medium that will do the job for you. And now I'm going to bring in a 
bit of gold. I've got this fairly dark gold, which will contrast ni nicely. Can't speak this morning with these colours. I think it'll stand out. So we'll get a bit of gold, a bit of contrast and a bit of shimmer and shine. This is just my Prima Metallic Accents Hybrid Palette. I have the Originals Palette and the Pastel Palette and I eventually took my favourites from both palettes and put them in one. Right, I'm going to dry that with my hairdryer again. So that's all dry now and that's enough mixed media at this stage. So all I'm going to do is take these apart and get them ready for the next stage. So I've just taken a little while to think about what I want to do with these scraps. And I've decided to use these rubber stamps. Now, I'm honestly not sure what brand they are. I got them from a charity shop. They might be stamping up. But what I'm going to do with them is stamp them on these paper scraps and then cut them out with scissors because I want them to be kind of uneven shapes, not perfectly die cut, if you see what I mean. I'm just going to test my idea. I've used stick glue to stick the stamp onto this acrylic block because it's not sticky in and of itself. And I'm going to get the Fuchsia, Vibrant Fuchsia Archival Ink again and see what I get when I stamp it. See if it's bold enough. Yeah, I think so. So I'm going to do a bunch of those in all these different stamp sizes and then cut them out with my scissors and then we'll turn them into some cards. But I'll do all this stamping off camera. But I think I'll just cut round them with a little border. Like that. And I think I'll um, add a little bit of ink like that around the edge scrape it across so i'll make a bunch of those and then come back to you right i've got two hearts here a large one with an xo 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 on and a smaller one with an unreadable scripty font and a fleur de lis there so i'm going to use two on the front of this card i'm not going to add a card panel but what I am going to do is add a strip of card, but I'm going to emboss it and I'm going to use this embossing folder. The strip's about three centimetres wide. I just want to get it lined up so the pattern is symmetrical. So now we've got a really lovely textural embossed pattern. I do need to trim it slightly because the embossing folder is not long enough really and i'm going to glue it where shall i glue it i could glue it here or here or in the middle and put my hearts like this yeah i think we'll go for a middle design pop some glue on the back of this lay it in the middle roughly and use my T-square ruler just to make sure it's straight. And to make the edge of the panel a little bit more finished to bevel it, make it look as if it was die cut. I've run around the edge with an embossing tool. Now I want to add my hearts and I'm thinking staggered like that, overlapping. But between the two hearts, so they're separated slightly, I'm going to add this gold foil doily, which I cut with this die. I think it just adds a little bit of sparkle. It lightens everything up and it, as I say, separates this heart from that heart. So you get a bit of depth. Now I want to add a flower. And I'm thinking white because it brings the background forwards a bit. So I've got this poppy. I think it's a poppy. 
and it's got a nice curve on it this one and it sort of mimics the curve of the small heart I don't want it to look flat so I cut a second poppy and I've just snipped the flower off and that is going to sit on top of there I like that I can offset it slightly so it looks as if there's multiple layers of petals so we've got a bit of dimension there which I rather like and I'm going to add crystal glaze to it to make it slightly dimensional and glossy the glaze is a little bit yellow until it's dried once it's dried it'll be completely clear for my sentiment i've used this love dye to cut a love out of smooth white cardstock again to bring some white to the front but i also want to bring some gold towards the front as well so i'm going to cut a little bit of this gold glitter cardstock put it behind the die cut Yeah, I think we're just going to pop it over here and before it sticks itself too firmly, I'm going to shuffle a bit of card underneath it just to keep it level. Right, here we have the card that I just made for you and five others. I've also got a little pile of hearts left over, so I'll keep those somewhere safe for use at a later date. So here's card number two. Instead of placing an embossed panel down the middle I put it about two-thirds of the way up and I used a different embossing folder this one's got a swirly pattern and I still used a doily die but I used a different doily die and a different flower die so this one feels a little bit more clean and simple because of where I placed everything in this band here and I've still got all this empty white space up here and up here when the cards uh, cut in two like this it doesn't feel like you've got quite as much white space so here's card number three and I put the embossed panel over to the right hand side again this I think makes it feel a little bit emptier here so that it's got some more breathing space again I used a different doily die and a different flower I haven't put crystal glaze on these yet I'm not sure if I will but I have added extra petals as I did with the poppy same on this one here I added extra flowers just to give it a bit of dimension and with this one and this one actually I've placed the love die in the middle of the card horizontally it's offset in the focal point over here so this one's to the left of the focal point this one's to the right of the focal point they actually sit bang in the middle of the card itself so it kind of works like that I think so the remaining cards I did landscape rather than portrait with this one I used the swirly whirly embossing folder again and put the band towards the bottom of the card and layered up everything in a very similar way to the other cards again well it's not a different doily die it's the same doily die that I used in the card that I made for you because I've only got five not six so I used that again for this one I used a different embossing folder again and I cut the strip into two thirds and one third and pop two thirds over here one third over here and kept my focal point up here so you've got some white space separating the two but the card has got a little bit of extra interest down here and for this one I used a stitch pattern embossing folder it's the same one I used on this card and I put it towards the top so we've got one near the bottom one split and one towards the top clustered these in a similar way over here I used the poppy die again because I really liked that one and there you have six bright bold mixed media cards and some extra hearts all made from white paper scraps I did use white paper scraps also to make my embossed panels I used the ones that I was going to save for sentiment strips so I used up some of those I used white paper scraps to cut out the loves and the flowers so all in all a really good white paper scrap session 
Right, I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you a few more ideas of things you can do with your own white paper scraps. And even if you haven't got these heart stamps, you can always just stamp a pattern and then cut any kind of heart shape out with scissors. You really don't need the same tools or supplies that I've got. Use what you have. Right, thanks for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.